Indy Mogul. This Halloween is the debut of AMC's The Walking Dead TV series, where the network will attempt to do for zombies what they did for advertising. But does anyone really think zombies have bad PR? Some of the best filmmakers in the world have made zombie movies, and The Walking Dead is based on a critically lauded and popular comic book. Yeah, maybe because their faces are falling off, zombies have trouble competing with the likes of Edward, Jacob, Eric, and oh, who are we kidding? Nobody likes Bill. But zombies are sexy because they have the kind of self-confidence only a Hollywood star can have. Don't believe me? Then let's take a look at their Rolodex, aka the top 10 zombie movies of all time. <laughs> Now, some of you might not believe this franchise belongs on the list, but you gotta respect something that's managed to stick around for almost a decade, especially in Hollywood. And giving Van Helsing and Buffy a run for their money is Zombie Slayer Alice, played in all four movies by Mila Jovovich. Resident Evil is the first mainstream zombie franchise, and the first to bring zombies to the 3D IMAX screen. Plus, with a fifth movie in development, it's a zombie itself, the franchise that just won't die. <laughs> In the name of art, Robert Rodriguez buried his zombie movie within the Grindhouse double feature, where many critics applauded it, but few moviegoers discovered it. Too bad, as this little undead gem features current Academy darling Josh Brolin, Fergie, Bruce Willis, and TV favorites Freddie Rodriguez and Naveen Andrews. It also stars Rose McGowan, whose go-go dancer with the machine gun leg was the icon of the pulp film, and Rodriguez's heart. He became so taken with McGowan while making the movie, he left his wife to be with her. As for Planet Terror, there's one place on Earth that ends up being a safe haven from the zombies. I don't want to ruin it for you, but with Rodriguez, I think you can guess. <laughs> When you mix dry British humor with a zombie apocalypse, you get sheer genius. Or more accurately, Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright. This comedy duo burst onto the comedy scene with this clever movie, which won over a cult following along with multiple awards. And while Pegg and Wright have yet to replicate their success, millions of people still have faith that they will, which shows you just how good Shaun of the Dead really is. Although, after Scott Pilgrim imploded at the box office, it looks like Edgar Wright's career might be walking dead. <laughs> Yeah, no crappy American remake on this list. We're giving props to the original Spanish horror film, which used shaky cam in a way that didn't make audiences roll their eyes or want to barf. In a post-9-11 world, Record told its zombie tale through the eyes of first responders, all recorded by an unlucky reporter and her cameraman. The clever film spawned a sequel and proved that while the characters might all be speaking Spanish, a scream is understood the world over. <laughs> If Sam Raimi ever wins an Oscar, and his odds ain't half bad, when he gets up there to accept, he really ought to thank zombies. Because few people have gotten as much out of the genre as Raimi. Although, to be fair, he did contribute an awful lot in return. Made for just $375,000, Raimi's Evil Dead was considered so horrifying that nobody would distribute it until he managed to get it into the Cannes Film Festival. But even once it was distributed, many theaters refused to play it, and nothing quite piques people's interest like Forbidden Fruit. Evil Dead became a huge cult hit, turning into a niche franchise with two more movies, a comic book, and even a musical. And last but certainly not least, it gave us Mr. Bruce Campbell. <laughs> You know who has won an Oscar? Danny Boyle. And while he didn't win it for no zombies, he certainly did the genre a solid with 28 Days Later. This was not only one of the first speedy zombie movies, but Boyle also had the nifty idea of showing just how fast the disease itself could spread. Cillian Murphy, in his first major role, plays a bike courier who wakes up in a hospital to discover that within just 28 days after the initial infection, London has become deserted. Hmm, come to think of it, a lot of people wake up in hospitals to the same dilemma. But one thing that was unique about Boyle's apocalypse was that he depicted an eerily empty metropolis long before Will Smith ever did. <laughs> A 
AKA Brain Dead, this was one of Peter Jackson's earliest and most beloved films. Yes, before he went all medieval on us, Jackson made a bloody name for himself in New Zealand. And apparently a decade after Evil Dead, audiences still weren't ready for extreme gore, as Dead Alive was also heavily censored. But what's unique about Dead Alive is that it's not only gory, but also extremely campy. You know, that place just on the edge of bad taste, and Peter Jackson does a fine balancing act with this movie. <laughs> This movie was originally going to go further back on the list until I noticed it's the zombie movie America loves most. Yes, of all the zombie movies released in the United States, Zombieland raked in the most dough with 75 million. That's not a ton of money in the scheme of things true, but it's certainly enough to breathe new life into the genre and give projects like The Walking Dead a chance. Plus, Zombieland also brought something else back from the dead, Woody Harrelson's career. It also was a stepping stone movie for current hot young stars Jesse Eisenberg and Emma Stone. The movie also has an awesome narrative device, telling the audience the rules of zombie survival throughout the story. There's also that clever Bill Murray cameo. In fact, the Zombieland script is so sharp that scribes Paul Warnick and Rhett Reese were snatched up by Fox to write the Deadpool movie. And Deadpool don't stand for any second-rate jokes. <laughs> This is one remake that does deserve a spot on the list. While he might have ticked off a number of Romero fans, Zack Snyder, in his directorial debut, redefined zombies for a new generation. Snyder, who cut his teeth directing commercials, took what had originally been a low-rent genre and brought it into the special effects age. These new zombies were fast and vicious, sporting all the razzle-dazzle necessary to compete in the new CGI marketplace. Before Zombieland, this was the biggest grossing zombie movie in the U.S., and it gave Snyder a launching pad that has taken him to impressive heights. In fact, Christopher Nolan just hand-picked him to direct Superman. Thanks, zombies! <laughs> reasonably argue there are better movies on this list, but none of them would exist without George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead. Not only did Romero create the modern zombie genre and lay the groundwork for the horror genre in general, but he also cast one of the first African-American heroes in film, Dwayne Jones, in the role of Ben. The film, which was released before the MPAA's rating system went into effect, caught audiences off guard and horrified many, making an impression that few would ever forget. And thanks to Romero, the zombie godfather, zombies will be invading your television this Halloween on AMC. And while you're waiting, why not make it a zombie month with these movies? I'm Grace Randolph, and I hope you enjoyed this BTT Top 10 list. Oh, and happy Halloween.